Following the events of the last film, Gru is now working as an agent for the Anti-Villain League, or AVL, alongside his wife, Lucy. Their mission is to stop Balthazar Brat, a former child actor who once starred as a young supervillain in the popular TV show, Evil Brat. After the show was cancelled due to his puberty, Brat adopted his on-screen persona and turned into a real supervillain. Although Gru prevents Brad from stealing a priceless diamond, he fails to capture him. Due to their repeated failures, Gru and Lucy are fired from the AVL by its new, harsh director, Valerie Da Vinci, following the retirement of Silas Ramsbottom. Gru and Lucy reluctantly break the news of their termination to their daughters, Margot, Edith, and Agnes, but promise to find new jobs soon. Dr. Nefario has frozen himself in carbonite, and most of Gru's minions abandon him when he refuses to return to villainy, even after losing his job. Meanwhile, Lucy struggles to adapt to her new role as the children's mother. The next morning, the family is visited by Fritz, the butler of Gru's long-lost twin brother, Drew, who lives in the distant country of Fredonia and wants to meet Gru. Shocked by this revelation, Gru confronts his mother, who admits that after divorcing Gru's father, they each took one child. The family decides to visit Drew and is surprised by his immense wealth, which Fritz attributes to their pig farming business. Meanwhile, the minions are arrested after trespassing at a talent show, and Brad successfully steals the diamond again, planning to use it to power a giant robot to destroy Hollywood as revenge for his show's cancellation. While Lucy takes the children on a tour of Fredonia, Drew reveals to Gru that their father was a legendary supervillain. Drew, who was always seen as a disappointment by their father, turns to Gru for guidance on becoming a villain himself. When Gru refuses to return to his old ways, Drew takes him on a joyride in their father's high-tech car, and the two brothers begin to bond. Meanwhile, Lucy tries to juggle her new role as a mom, showing her protective side when she turns away a boy named Nico who has a crush on Margot during a traditional cheese festival. At the same time, Edith and Agnes wander into a local tavern where they hear from a bartender about a mythical unicorn said to live in the nearby forest. Gru tries to gently explain to Agnes that unicorns aren't real but decides not to dash her hopes. The next day, Agnes and Edith venture into the woods in search of the mythical creature only to discover a one-horned goat which Agnes affectionately names Lucky and quickly grows attached to. Meanwhile, back in Los Angeles, the Minions, driven by hunger, follow a pizza delivery boy into a studio and end up getting arrested. In jail, the Minions quickly establish control among the other inmates, but their longing for Gru inspires them to plan an escape. After discovering that Brad has stolen the diamond, Drew persuades Gru to join him in one last heist to steal it back. Gru secretly plans to return the diamond to the AVL, hoping it will get him reinstated by Da Vinci. Despite several challenges, they successfully retrieve the diamond and narrowly escape, with Lucy rescuing them after following them. When Drew learns of Gru's true intentions, he confronts him about the deception, leading to an argument. Gru insults Drew and decides to leave his mansion. Meanwhile, Brad infiltrates the mansion disguised as Lucy, kidnaps the children, and reclaims the diamond, forcing the brothers to resolve their differences and team up to stop him. With his robot now powered, Brad begins terrorizing Hollywood as planned. Lucy saves the children, while Gru and Drew weaken the robot using their father's car's weapon. When the car is destroyed, Gru is not unconscious. And Drew, tapping into his inner villain, destroys the robot's core from the inside when Brad threatens Gru's life. After regaining consciousness, Gru engages Brad in a dance fight, using it as a distraction to seize Brad's guitar, eventually trapping him in his own gum and blasting him away. The minions arrive just in time to help clear the city of the gum, and Gru and Drew reunite. Soon after, Gru and Lucy are reinstated in the AVL, and the reunited family celebrates at Gru's home. The children finally acknowledge Lucy as their mother. Drew, still eager to embrace his villainous side, steals Gru's ship with the minions by his side. Gru and Lucy decide to give them a five-minute head start before chasing after them. Despicable Me introduced a fresh blend of humor and heart with its unique European flair, memorable slapstick, and the lovable antics of the minions. Its success led to the inevitable Despicable Me 2, which, while financially successful, lacked the original's charm and introduced a less memorable storyline. The Minions, though still entertaining, began to lose their appeal, a trend that became more apparent in the spin-off Minions, which overstayed its welcome. Now, Despicable Me 3 arrives as a formulaic, corporate-driven sequel focused more on revenue than creativity, making it feel like a hollow cash grab. The film tries to balance multiple subplots, including Lucy's struggles as a new mom and the Minions' misadventures, but fails to engage his target audience with a story that feels disjointed and out of touch. Despite the colorful animation and nostalgic soundtrack, the movie ultimately lacks the freshness and lasting appeal of its predecessors, leaving it as a forgettable entry in the franchise. Thank you very much for watching the whole video. And 
If you have a movie or TV show that you want us to cover, just comment it down below. We'll make a video of it in the future. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out our playlist for more recaps.